observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. Well, it's well known. I love Moon Knight. Now, here's the thing, though. People are always going like, Rob, I, I you know, I just, I just don't know anything about Moon Knight. What, you know, he's been in animated shows and video games and comics. I just don't know. Okay. Here's the problem with the character of Moon Knight. Everyone's always tried to change him. I mean, he has been, there is no one iteration of Moon Knight. Now, in my mind, uh, the very first volume one of Moon Knight uh, is, is the iteration I fell in love with. My friend Shade Roop gave me the, the I want to say, the first 30 issues of Moon Knight. So, Moon Knight was actually introduced in 1975 in the pages of the comic Werewolf by Night. So, by, uh, by uh, association, Moon Knight was a supernatural character, but not really defined. Like, people were like, well, what is this character? We didn't really know. And then he was a, a backup in the pages of the Hulk magazine. And uh, Moon Knight was drawn by the superlative Bill Sienkiewicz, one of, to this day, my favorite comic book artists of all time. Now, even Bill Sienkiewicz, who, by the way, I've interviewed on this channel, great, if I do say so myself, a great two-hour interview I've done in the past. Check it out because Bill Sienkiewicz is a wonderful guy and an amazing talent. But Moon Knight... I would say of all the superheroes, the comic superheroes in the Marvel pantheon, he's very iterative. He's been changed and 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 altered and 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 it's 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 kind of a strange. I mean, Moon Knight is kind of I will admit it. He's kind of a strange character, and and I like I'll flat out I will flat out admit I'll I'll just say. And as I, I, I realized, I forgot I forgot to pull up all these Moon Knight graphics I pulled down for this, this show. The Moon Knight that I loved in the thumbnail, this kind of reminds me. It's not Bill Sienkiewicz art, but this, this is the Moon Knight that I really kind of loved. And for those of you who don't know, Moon Knight originally began, I mean... As I said, he was kind of undefined in the pages of Werewolf by Night in 1975. But in the first... So so Moon Knight has an interesting place in Marvel history. Um, normally, up until the, well, the very early 80s, you would buy comic books on spindle racks in 7-Elevens or drug stores. And you go around and you pull them out and they stacked up or whatever. But because there were comic book stores that arose in the 70s and early 80s, they created what was called the direct sale market, which means that comic book stores would be the first line of defense or whatever, the first place to get comic books. And what they would do with that is that Marvel began like both Marvel and DC had direct sale only comics which were not defined by the comics code authority they could do whatever they want they could heighten up the violence or they could make them more adult or whatever so Marvel had three uh comic book series that became direct sale they were on the they were on the uh spindle racks and in, in drug stores and 7-Elevens and then they 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 made them direct sale only. And Moon Knight was one of the first three of those comics. The others were Micronauts, Kazar, and Moon Knight. Because they were more adult in content, or you know, they didn't they didn't have to be beholden to the comics code authority, which was like the Hayes Code, but for comics. So this is a big deal. And my friend Shade gave me, I want to say, the first 30 issues of Moon Knight. And I was like, wow. And uh, so the first volume of Moon Knight was written by the great Doug Mensch, and it was drawn by Bill Sienkiewicz. Now, Bill Sienkiewicz, again, one of my favorite comic artists, he went on to do things like Electra Assassin. He did The New Mutants. 
Um, he his style was very abstract. It was wild and crazy. And yet, when he began, when he first started drawing Volume One, Issue One of Moon Knight, he was criticized as a Neil Adams clone. A lot of his work was very redolent of what Neil Adams had been doing with the Batman in the 70s. And they weren't necessarily wrong. And Bill Sienkiewicz will be the first to admit it. He was emulating other comic book artists. But if you look at his tenure on Moon Knight, which lasted 30 issues, he you, you can watch an artist going from emulating one style to developing his own style. And by the time... He ended his tenure on Moon Knight and moved over to New Mutants when he did the famous Demon Bear storyline. It was mind-blowing. I mean, his his work, his abstractions, and then if you look at the way he drew the Kingpin and things like Electra Assassin, uh, his work, superlative, amazing. But for me, when I fell in love with the character, Moon Knight was a mercenary, Mark Spector, who was uh, like the major domo or the second in command of a guy named Bushman. And they were mercenaries in Africa and they plundered things, archaeological digs, whatever. This is pre Raiders of the Lost Ark. And Mark Spector was left for dead because of various plot machinations. And um, uh, he. He was left for dead by Bushman and may or may not have been revived in a Egyptian tomb by Khonshu, the god of the moon, the Egyptian god of the moon. And so M Moon Knight was born, and Mark Spector relocated to New York a la Batman and recreated himself as Stephen Grant, billionaire playboy. And then he was also Mark Spector, but no one knew that. And then he was also, he created another persona for himself, Jake Lockley, cab driver, so he could keep his nose to the grindstone. And then, of course, Moon Knight, his superhero persona that uh, was a um, reflection of Khonshu, and he may or may not be a reincarnation of the Egyptian god of the moon. But you know what? Before I get into... well. I found an article that I, I, I thought was worthy from August 25th, 2019, from Den of Geek, um, written by Mark Buxton, and I figured let's share it with you now. So if you don't know anything about Moon Knight, this is a pretty good article, so I'm going to read it. Since Moon Knight was created by Doug Bench and Don Perlin in 1975's Werewolf by Night 32, the, fish of, the Fist of Khonshu has been a fixture of the Marvel Universe. Through it all, Mark Spector has swapped identities, costumes, and supporting casts. But the one motif that has stayed constant with Moon Knight is the very thing that sets him apart from Batman and other caped Avengers. He suffers from severe mental health issues, but still fights for justice, and it has made the character unique in Marvel's pantheon. Now, I just want to point out that this came later. When, when Moon Knight was established in that first volume, he had these different identities, but he had yet to suffer from disassociative identity disorder. And I have to say, full disclosure, when I was a senior in high school, my first crack at screenwriting was writing a Moon Knight screenplay for Carol Penke's class. It was terrible. But but what I had done was I took the, the Moon Knight origin as detailed in Moon Knight 1, and combined it with the Black Spectre, the two, the 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 double issue storyline in Moon Knight twenty five, and I had tried to write a screenplay based on those two issues, which by the way are still great issues. My screenplay, I wish I had a copy of it. The computers weren't around then. It was fucking terrible. It was terrible. It wasn't good, but it was the first time I ever tried to write a screenplay. Just so you know. But back then. Moon Knight had alter egos and different identities, but he didn't suffer from mental illness. This came later, but it was a logical extension of where Moon Knight was at. So, anyway, to go on. Um, that's all... Uh oh hang on. Uh, 
There have been a number of talented creators that tried to find the key to Moon Knight's publishing success, but few have ever really managed to bring Moon Knight to mainstream success. Now, I just want to point out that Moon Knight, the Bill Sienkiewicz, Doug Mensch run on Moon Knight was really successful. It was it was the first of three direct sale only comics. People loved it. I mean, it was a big deal. And for me, total disclosure, I actually took there's a there was a very film noir quality to Moon Knight that I loved because I had seen so many noir films. And when I was in high school, there was a character in uh, the first run of Moon Knight called Stained Glass Scarlet, and uh, very very much a femme fatale in the the film noir mold. Loved it, and I actually took that comic to school to Carol Penke, the teacher. She was so smart, and I had such a crush on her. And uh, I wanted I wanted her to like me, so I she would she would diss on comic books. And so I took this comic, and I'm like, Carol, you gotta you gotta read this. And she read it, and in a soul crushing assessment of the comic, she said, Well, I understand why you like this, but you understand it, they're just tropes. They're just film noir tropes. And I was like, uh, really? I was crushed. My The one teacher I had, well, I, I had a crush on my second grade teacher, but this was high school, man. I was like, oh, I felt bad. I felt bad. Carol Penke, if you're still around, I remember you. You were a great teacher. I loved you. Anyway, so <clears throat> let's go on. So here is an image. Here's a, 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 a frame of Werewolf by Night back in the uh, 1975. You having a chance against Moon Knight Monster. For the harder you fight, the quicker you die. And first of all, I don't know about the uh, practicalities of a superhero fighting in the night wearing an all-white suit, but all right. The early days. Mark Spector was first introduced as a foil to Marvel's Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight's unique look made him popular with fans, so M Marvel gave the vigilante his own tryout in the pages of Marvel Spotlight, which I have, and I will, I will get slapped. To help distinguish the character from Batman, Doug mentioned Don Perlin tried to put some more distance between Mark Spector and Bruce Wayne. Yes, Moon Knight had the European Man Friday in his right-hand man, Frenchie. The palatial mansion, the billions, the women, the gadgets. But he also had a very different method of fighting crime. Those early stories not only gave readers their first glimpse into the man behind the cowl, they revealed that Spectre would also operate as a cab driver named Jake Lockley in order to get closer to the criminal elements Moon Knight was sworn to stop. Spectre also masqueraded as Stephen Grant, millionaire playboy. This playing with identities would become a Moon Knight staple, as Spectre would bounce around between the three, trying to find a balance and meaning through any of them. Soon, Frenchie would be fleshed out to a much more than an Alfred clone, and Moon Knight's constant love, Marlene Alrain, would be introduced to give the hero a, diver a, a diverse cast of players for the dramas ahead. After Marvel Spotlight, Moon Knight popped around the Marvel Universe before settling into a solo feature in the back of Hulk magazine and his own black-and-white one-shot feature in Marvel Preview. These issues claim to fame is the absolutely stunning art by some of the industry's finest talents. The magazine appearances began the long association between Moon Knight and Bill Sienkiewicz, the artist that would visually inform the character for a long time time to come this of course this image is the cover of moon knight one the first solo series the first moon knight solo series finally revealed mark specter's origin further removing the character from accusations that the silver cape warrior was simply a batman clone the monthly revealed specter's background as a soldier of fortune in egypt who was left to die at the hands of his brutal enemy the bushman the god Khonshu promised to bring Spectre back to life if the soldier would become an avatar of vengeance in Khonshu's name. Spectre agreed and wrapped in Khonshu's silver raiment, eventually found and defeated Bushman in single combat. The series also revealed that Spectre was the son of a rabbi. So now fans had a pagan god blessing the son of a Jewish 
holy man with magical life to serve as a sort of golem against crime. And me, being an adopted Jew, I mean, I was adopted into a Jewish family and raised in the Jewish tradition, went to Sunday school, learned Hebrew, was bar mitzvahed, all that. Perhaps that was something I identified with because, well, well, Mark Spector was a real Jew and I was a, I was a Jew that, uh, uh, well, I actually found out when I was 29, I was born to a Jewish mother, but I didn't know it at the time. So I did identify with Moon Knight. Uh, loved the character, loved it so much. But more especially, I loved Sienkiewicz's art. It was fantastic. Loved it. Uh, and I love the idea of the golem. I mean, Jewish uh, folktales, Jewish Yiddish folktales are amazing. With the Yeni Velt, the Lamed Vav, Osmodius, Lilith, great scary shit. The idea of of a, of a minion forming, uh, being able to resurrect a man of clay to to fight against the pogroms, against the Jewish people. I love this shit. I'm like, fuck, I love being a Jew. It's awesome. But anyway, maybe that was uh, an attraction I had to Moon Knight, but I can't say. I don't remember. Anyway, the series was a celebration of comics' sheer insanity. A chaotic melding of concepts and worlds, mythological gods combined with real-world religious dogma to create a hero like no other. At this point, Bill Sienkiewicz came into his own as an artist, as the book built up some critical cachet. Many of the adversaries in the book, such as Cyclone, Conqueror, Lord Randall, the Hatchet Man, Midnight Man, and the Committee, well, they failed to become anything more than one-off antagonists, although the book did introduce Stained Glass Scarlet, a femme fatale that should have, could have, would have become Moon Knight's Electra. The historical importance of the title was the mood and tones that Mench Sienkiewicz and the company set a more mature and brooding book that targeted the adult comic buyers of the newly minted direct sale market. So I have to say that this, for people, everyone's like, Rob, why do you love this character? This was the iteration of Moon Knight that I loved. This is it. I mean, to me, and to be honest, I'll flat out tell you, I have never loved Moon Knight more than I love the first 30 issues of the Doug Mensch, Bill Sienkiewicz Moon Knight. That to me is the definitive Moon Knight. And yet the character of Moon Knight, which I have followed and Moon Knight has a new series coming out and we will talk about how fucking bonkers it is in a minute. But I, I, I'm just going to delve further into Moon Knight. Moon Knight's second short-lived title abandoned the multiple identity angle and instead had the wealthy Mark Spector travel the world opening art galleries. While a roaming artistic vigilante does have a certain daring and originality, it wasn't the direction fans seemed to want. You know why? Because it wasn't good. The new series also saw alterations to Moon Knight's perfectly designed costume, adding busy visual elements such as gold braces, a belt, and a gigantic onk. Um, yeah. And, and this is the problem. Everyone's like, well, you know, we have to add our own uh, imprintur to the Moon Knight comic. I didn't like it. Um, I have it. You know, I've got issues of it and all that. I bought them all because I love Moon Knight. Moon Knight soon popped up in the pages of the West Coast Avengers where the usually solo vigilante joined the team. Sadly, this alliance was marred by the fact that most of his run with the team, Spectre was possessed, possessed by the spirit of Khonshu. This moment created a rift between Moon Knight and the Avengers and also defined the character of Khonshu for years to come. He was no longer a magnanimous god, but a cruel puppet master that saw Spectre as a hapless servant. <sighs> This violation further fractured Spectre's delicate psyche. Strangely, it was revealed that Khonshu possessed Spectre because it was the god who wanted to join the team and not the hero. I mean, uh, we're so far removed from what I loved about the character. We're, we're way down the rabbit hole. And it also shows that... that Moon Knight, which was pretty based in the real world, and, and the only idea was that, in my mind, what I loved about Moon Knight was 
he believed that the spirit of, of the moon, that Khonshu resurrected him. But in my mind, not really. That was that was his that was his thing that he used. But then they weighed into that, and then Khonshu became much more. I, I mean, as you know, no Khonshu's a real god possessing him, and it became a a very different comic from the comic I loved in those first thirty issues. Moon Knight's longest series, Mark Spector Moon Knight, ran for five years with some amazing stories by writers like Chuck Dixon, Dixon and J.M. DeMattius that saw the urban hero interact with the rest of the Marvel Universe like never before. The book returned Spectre to his vigilante roots with a healthy dose of street-level mysticism that made him famous in the early 80s. The series saw the return of Bushman along with the introduction of teen sidekick, teen sidekick Midnight, probably not the best move for a character that was always being compared to Batman. The book fleshed out Spectre, Frenchie, Marlene, and even Conchu, who was revealed to be a god of justice, not vengeance. Dixon and Dematius penned some of the best stories to ever grace a Moon Knight comic. Sadly, the excesses of the 90s were soon to trump solid storytelling as the book was shoehorned into a number of crossovers like Acts of Vengeance and Infinity War. No, not that one while countless guest stars almost pushed Moon Knight out of his own feature. Oddly enough, it was at this time that Moon Knight would also experience its greatest sales success when newcomer Stephen Platt took over the art chores. I gotta say, brah. Stephen Platt, while I don't love him as much as I love Sienkiewicz, his detailed artwork was absolutely out of fucking control. It was amazing. The story was forgettable at bet best, but Platt's anatomy-bending style fit so perfectly into the image generation of comics that Moon Knight became one of the hottest titles on the market for a brief time. With Platt's final issue, the series that started off as one of Marvel's coolest titles devolved into a crossover-laden guest star fest that killed off Mark Spector. At this point, death was old hat for Moon Knight, who would not stay in the cold grave for long. Like all good mainstream superheroes, Moon Knight had to be resurrected at least once. And when he was, it was by returning creator Doug Mensch who brought the wonderful strangeness back to the character in two late 90s miniseries. Resurrect Resurrection War and High Strangers were a return to Moon Knight's roots, jettisoning, jettisoning, jettisoning the baggage of the 90s sidekicks, adamantium suits, and guest star clutter, these stories were a breath of fresh air for fans wanting to get back to the pure and unapologetic weirdness that defined Moon Knight in the early days of the character. So, there you go. I mean, look at this, look at this artwork. That was some dope shit. The 2006 relaunch saw Marvel put a major marketing push behind the arrival of popular novelist Charlie Houston and megastar penciler David Finch. Marvel seemed to be determined, this time to force Moon Knight to work as more than just a periphery character, and boy, was it violent. While the book brought in many elements from the modern Marvel universe, it at times delved so much into gore and violence that it bordered on parody. Moon Knight had always been an edgy character, but in the first issue, he defeats a returned Bushman by carving his face off with one of his crescent moon darts. An increasingly broken and unstable Mark Spector began to view the removed visage as a spiritual guide which he believed contained the spirit of Khonshu. So yes, Moon Knight carried around a hunk of rotting skin that he thought was a god. Makes the four personality things seem like a Norman Rockwell painting. The series examined Moon Knight's role as the most unstable member of the Marvel pantheon of heroes and often brought in other Marvel heroes with the sole purpose of telling him he was batshit. Most importantly to Moon Knight history, the book retconned Mark Spector into a Gulf War soldier. Now, I'm not going to read any more of this. It's a great article. But, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. So anyway, Moon Knight has been, again, a very iterative character. It's, he's been all over the place. And the problem with Moon Knight that I've had since I fell in love with that character 
was when I fell in love with him, he was a Batman clone or a Batman, a derivation of Batman. I love that. I love what they did, a little different, different enough. But then they keep trying to change him to chase trends, like the Bond franchise. In the 60s, Bond set trends, like the original Moon Knight comic when it went direct sale. And then after that, even to this day, Moon Knight has chased trends. And what happened was with Moon Knight is then they, over the last, well, call it well, almost 20 years, but since the mid-aughts, Moon Knight has been altered into a character that suffers from disassociative identity disorder, i.e. he's nuts. I hope, don't mean to offend anyone, but he's crazy. And he, he is disassociated or, or, or untethered from reality, which has, has allowed for some great storytelling. But if you look at where I fell in love with the character to where it is now, it's a very different vibe. Very different vibe. Now, they are making, obviously, they've made a Moon Knight TV series. And the, the MCU is adding Moon Knight to their pantheon of heroes. Now, this is a long way from my 1985 Moon Knight screenplay based on Moon Knight Volume 1 episode or Issue 1 and Issue 25. Very different. But I'm not going to lie. I'm excited. I've loved Moon Knight for 40 years. Actually, what, 40? Well, I'd say 40 years because I didn't, I didn't, I, I got it after it was like 20 issues in. So 40 years. So Bill Sienkiewicz, my favorite, one of my favorite comic artists, made this painting. This is the cover of the new issue of Empire, Empire Magazine, my favorite film magazine, well, still being published, but it's been my favorite film magazine for 20 years. He did this special cover for subscribers only. Now, any of you UK viewers, if you have this, I will pay a premium if I can get a mint condition copy from you. Or if Empire is going to make this poster available, I dearly, I really, really really want to have this i want to get it framed um here is an image of oscar isaac in the costume and you know what i do love about this because it's it, the series is clearly going to be an amalgamation of the moon knight character i love the idea that this iteration of moon knight is a living mummy i don't know this appeals to me as a horror fan um i love this now, I thought this was the only iteration of Moon Knight, but later on, we have this iteration of Moon Knight, which became, this is the Mr. Knight version when he was in a suit. This came up in the 2010s. Well, so clearly, we're getting both versions, and that's pretty dope. I have to say, okay, look, they're leaning heavily into the Moon Knight characterization that i not my favorite but i'm i'm pretty excited about this and um what can i say i mean i love moon knight i've loved moon knight for a long time and there's just something about it i don't know 